Hi, I'm Mike from Craft Supplies USA, and today we're going to turn a pen with a carbide insert tool. Pen turning is always evolving, and one recent development is the carbide insert tool. These tools use small, replaceable carbide cutters set in a square tool shank, and when the cutter gets dull, you simply rotate to a fresh cutting edge. Carbide insert tools offer several advantages over traditional tools. They don't require a grinder for sharpening and they're very easy to control. And the carbide cutter makes it easy to achieve a smooth surface on most materials. There are several different carbide tools on the market, but for pen turning, I recommend using one with a radius cutter. It's the most forgiving and easiest to use. I'll turn today's pen with just this one tool, but if you want to see a video on turning a pen with traditional tools, we'll link to it up here and in the description below. Along with the carbide insert turning tool, to complete this project you'll need a pen kit, a turning blank of your choice, bushings, a drill bit, a barrel trimmer, and some standard turning supplies. When turning pens, I prefer to use dense hardwoods, stabilized woods, or acrylic blanks. Pens get handled a lot and soft woods will show dents and scratches easily, so I'm going to be using a stabilized box elder burl pen blank. And as a resource for this video, we'll include links to all the products we've used in the description below. For this video, I've chosen to turn the Roadster pen because it's easy to turn and it has a classy look. Now grab the brass tubes that came with your pen kit and check their length. Some pens use brass tubes with different lengths for the top and bottom of the pen. With this pen, both tubes are identical, so it doesn't matter which is the top or bottom. If you are unsure, check the instructions that came with the kit. Now take the brass tubes and place one on top of the blank, flush with the end. Make a mark about a quarter inch longer than the tube, then repeat with the second tube. Mark the blank with a perpendicular line to help keep track of grain alignment. This will come in handy later. Cut the blank on your marks with your preferred method. Next we need to drill the holes in our pen blanks. I'm going to be drilling on the lathe because it's the most accurate and easiest way to do this. Check your instructions that came with your pen kit to verify you have the right drill bit. For this pen kit, we're going to be using a 7mm drill bit. Mount a blank in some pen drilling jaws in your chuck. Then with the lathe running at about 2000 RPM, use your carbide tool to square the end of the blank. Then use the corner of the tool to create a small dimple so the bit will start on center. Secure the drill bit in the tailstock using a drill chuck and move the tailstock up until the bit is almost touching the blank, then lock down the tailstock. Now turn the lathe speed down to around 500 RPMs Then advance the bit slowly by turning the hand wheel on the tailstock. Make sure to stop and back the drill bit out every half inch or so to clear the chips, keeping the blank from overheating. Continue until the bit exits the back of the blank. Then repeat with the second blank. After drilling, it's time to glue the brass tubes into the blanks. Start by lightly scuffing the tube with 220 grit sandpaper to give the glue a better bond. You can use epoxy or CA glue, but I prefer a thick CA also known as cyanoacrylate glue because it doesn't require mixing and sets very fast. Now coat a tube in thick CA glue twisting as you insert it to spread the glue evenly. Work quickly as CA glue sets very fast. Keep going until the tube is just below the surface of the blank, ensuring that the tube is not protruding from either end. Now glue the second blank the exact same way. You can wait a few minutes or spray with an activator to set the glue instantly. Now 
After the glue cures, you're going to need to square the ends of the blanks even with the brass tubes. This is critical for the pen components to fit together properly after turning. To make this step easy, we'll use a barrel trimmer, which is a mill mounted on a precisely sized pilot shaft that fits into the brass tube. In this case, we'll be using a barrel trimmer with a 7mm pilot shaft. Hold the blank in a vise while lightly cutting just until the tube is revealed. Don't cut too far or the pen will be too short which will cause problems during assembly. Repeat with the second blank and when you're finished, the blank should look like this. Now that the blanks are glued and trimmed, we can mount them on the lathe. Before mounting your pen blanks on the pen mandrel, reference the instructions for the proper bushing layout. And this is important because the bushings help you size your turning correctly. Place a pen mandrel into your headstock, then slide on the first bushing, seat the first blank, place the second bushing, then the second blank, and finally slide on the third bushing and lock everything in place with the knurled nut. And notice here that our marked line meets up on the blanks so the grain stays aligned. To support the pen mandrel, slide a 60 degree revolving cone center against it, then lock down the tailstock. Now carefully advance the revolving center with the hand wheel until the tip rests snugly inside the dimple on the end of the pen mandrel. When it is just supporting the mandrel, lock down the quill and don't over tighten because the center will bow the pen mandrel and produce oval shaped pens. Now we can start turning. Position the tool rest as close as you can to the blanks without touching, rotating the blank by hand to verify the edges don't come in contact with the rest. To be successful with a carbide insert tool, simply make sure that the cutter contacts the blank at center and that the tool is parallel to the ground. I'll turn the entire pen with just this one tool. Now turn the lathe on and set the lathe speed to around 3200 RPM. And with a firm grip on the tool, place it on the tool rest and advance it until it contacts the wood. Move the tool from side to side, keeping it level and remove all the edges until the blanks are round. Once the edges are knocked off and the blanks are round, move the tool rest a little closer for safety. Again, keep a firm grip on the tool and move it back and forth taking light cuts with each pass. This is where the radius cutter comes in handy because the corners don't dig in, which makes turning a lot easier. Keep an eye on the bushings as you turn because not only do they hold the blank in place, they're also an excellent gauge for the finished diameter of the pen. Stop turning when the blanks are just proud of the bushings, so we'll have enough material to compensate for sanding. Once the blanks are turned to shape, it's time to sand. 
We've found Abernet sanding screens to be perfect for pen turning. They cut well and don't load like traditional paper. Set the speed to around 2000 RPM. With the carbide insert tool, the final cut is very smooth, so I'll start with 320 grit. Sand with light pressure, moving the paper back and forth constantly across the blanks. Spend more time on the coarser grits as they'll even out the turning and the finer grits will polish the blanks. Work your way through the grits, stopping the lathe and sanding laterally between each grit. This will get rid of the radial scratches that form when sanding on the lathe. I'll sand through at least 600 grit. Once you're done sanding, choose a finish for your pen that looks good but will hold up well to repeated handling. My preferred finish and the most durable is a CA pen finish, which is applied by building up thin layers of CA or super glue. We'll cover the basics here, but if you want a more in-depth video on CA pen finishing, we'll have a link here and in the description below. Start by swapping your bushings with the non-stick pen bushings to prevent the blanks from being glued to the bushings. Let's start by covering one blank at a time in thin CA glue to seal and strengthen the wood. Then lightly spray with activator to set the glue. Now turn the lathe down to around 200 RPM because going slow will prevent the glue from curing too fast. Using a medium CA glue, begin applying very light coats with just a few drops on top of each blank with some paper towel, then smooth it out. Spray lightly with activator and wait a few seconds before the next coat, making sure we're only working on one blank at a time so the glue doesn't set too fast. Repeat this process and apply 7 to 10 coats to each blank. Once you've built up a thick CA finish, it's time to smooth it out with some fine grit sandpaper. I recommend microsurface pen finishing pads because they're very easy to use and produce a glass-like finish. Bring the lathe speed back up to 1500 RPM, then dip each pad in water starting with 1500 grit. Move the pad back and forth across the blanks for a consistent finish. The lowest grit is the most important here, so make sure the finish is nice and level before moving on. This might take some time, but it's well worth the effort. Now stop the lathe and sand laterally between each grit just like before. Repeat this process with each pad all the way through 12,000 grit. Once you've sanded through 12,000 grit, add a small amount of hot plastic polish to a soft cloth and gently apply it to the blanks for a beautiful shine.
After polishing, remove the pen blanks from the mandrel and remember their proper order for grain alignment. The ends will likely have a small amount of CA glue on the end that can be removed by hand using some 1500 grit sandpaper. Now that the blanks are finished, it's time for assembly. Check your instructions for the correct order of parts, then lay them out on the table accordingly. The pens we sell are all held together by press fitting the parts into the brass tube. Therefore, gluing the parts together is not necessary. The pen can be assembled using a simple shop vise, but I like using the Pen Ultimate assembly tool. It gives me more control when I'm pressing in the parts, and the plastic pieces don't scratch the parts. It's a good idea to start the parts by hand to make sure they're square, then finish with the press. If a part gets pressed in at an angle, it can split your turning or crack the CA finish, so use precision here and avoid any mistakes. And take special care when pressing in the twist mechanism. Just press until the indent is flush with the edge of the tube. And this is where the pen ultimate comes in handy, giving you very fine control by simply rotating the hand wheel on the tailstock. Once the parts are all pressed in, align the grain with a simple twist and you're done. Your Roadster pen is now finished and ready to show off to your friends and family. Turning pens is a lot of fun, and be sure to visit us at woodturnerscatalog.com to learn more about this exciting hobby. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for the latest in woodturning. And if you need any pen turning supplies, click the link right here or down in the description below.